hate-fueled faith at home chased Nate Phelps far away from Christianity. He is one of 13 children of Fred Phelps, the controversial self-styled pastor of Westboro Baptist Church in Topeka, Kansas. Nate, thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me on. You now lead a Calgary atheist organization, uh, but you've described growing up in the religious Phelps family, it was like a war zone. What went on? Well, my father was a, a strong advocate for um, like a hyper-Calvinist theology, and uh, he felt like he had to control every aspect of, of our lives and the lives of the people in the congregation. So it was a very uh, strict, rigid, uh, exclusive environment. You know, we were cut off from the rest of the world, and, and he controlled that by uh, using both physical and, and uh, emotional violence regularly in the home and in the church. When did you realize that the faith in your family was toxic or the faith was totally malfunctioning? Well, when I was living there, it was more an issue of um, just not seeing eye to eye with the way my father behaved, uh, you know, towards other people. But it wasn't until years later after I had, had left believing that I was going to hell for leaving and then traveling this path of, of um, spending time with a, a counselor who had a theology degree. I, I got pretty much a two-year th theological degree in just the books that I read working with him. And I spent years in an, e in an evangelical free church and uh, the Calvary system down in Southern California before I, I really came to understand what issues really were important and what was wrong with my father's theology. And you planned your escape from your father at 18 down to the second. You had a car in ha hiding, you had money. What happened after you left home? Well, I actually hadn't planned that very well. I, uh, the first three nights that I was gone, I slept in the bathroom of a gas station. Of, mm -hmm. I knew the uh, owner of the gas station and he was kind enough to let me do that. Then I got a room with my uh, brother's mother-in-law. And from there, you know, it was you know, two steps forward, one step back kind of thing. But it took me probably three years to get myself focused and on the track for earning a living and, and uh, getting on with my life. You joined an evangelical church, one like I would probably be very comfortable with in on a Sunday. Mm -hmm. And yet you've left it all behind. You've mm -hmm. left, and, and I guess I want to ask, are you leaving the love of God behind? Well, yeah, that's... That's often a misunderstanding people have, that if, if you say that you're an atheist or that you don't accept the ideas that exist out there about God, that you're also abandoning um, morality and goodness and kindness and love and those types of things, uh, that couldn't be further from the truth. You know, I think that that was one of the reasons why I left my father's house to begin with is because I had this tendency towards being a lot more sensitive and caring about others. For me, the decision to step back from the idea of a God was a very, um, for me, a very thoughtful, logical process of looking at the evidence and saying, if I'm going to hold to an idea that, that um, speaks to so much of what's important in life, I have to be absolutely certain about that idea or I end up making bad choices and wrong decisions. So I had to let go of the idea of a God. Okay, so you have looked carefully at what you're setting aside, and your, your father preached hatred against many people, including uh, the gay community. Do you believe Jesus would do that? There's no way that Christ would have done what my father does, because Christ, as we understand him, is generally what is reflected in society in general. Not only your father, but now your sister is the spokesperson for the family. I've listened to her on anniversaries of 9-11, speaking against Americans, uh, phenomenal spreading of hateful ideas. There's only about 100 followers for your less. father, and it's less than 100 followers. I see they're capable of spreading hate. Are they also capable of violence? There's no evidence for that. Um, I, I have said in the past, and, and I'm very careful saying it now because of the way it was misunderstood, my father, one of, the, one of the attributes of a cult is that you have a controlling, um, charismatic leader. And they have that in my father, absolutely. And so all it would take for that situation to turn to some kind of violent act is if my father found that evidence in the Bible, 
that it was necessary to do it, then it would happen. But they have never. They are very careful because they understand the legal implications of what they do. I, I personally don't see that happening. Nate Phelps, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Well, now it's time to find out what you think. Does religion cause violence? Yes or no, add your voice to the conversation. Send us your answers by phone, email, Facebook, or Twitter. And our studio audience is taking a live vote. And I'll come back with those results in a moment. Coming up, is God violent? We have just the person to ask. Coming up, meet Yale theologian Miroslav Volf. There will be a world of love. But there can be no world of love if sin, if evil, is not excluded from it.